you have probably already used the drag and drop functionality on the internet. It's a pretty common functionality used by, for example, Trello, Notion, and many others. In this video, you are going to learn how to create one in Bubble, just like the one below, where you can drag and drop an element and make modifications on it with workflows based on where you dropped it. So to illustrate this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Kanban, which is something that you can maybe find on Trello or Notion, but this tutorial will work and apply to pretty much any type of design. As you can see, this Kanban displays a list of tasks that are filtered based on their status. So we have to do, late, and done. And I can take one task, for example, cross-browser testing, which is currently in to do, and I can drag it into late. And we can see that it is now into late and I can then drag it to done and its statue will be um, updated based on the colon in which I've dropped it. By the way, if you like this Kanban and want to reuse it in your app, you can find it in no codable components UI library for Bubble. You simply have to copy it and paste it to your app and you'll be good to go. You'll find a link to it in the description. Right, so first thing first, let's take a look at how my Kanban is built. So basically, we can see that we have um, a bunch of groups and mostly a bunch of repeating groups. So if I click into them, we can see that I have my arborescence and I have a first repeating group that is going to display the list of status. So to do, late, done. Um, this is going to be my columns, my three columns that we were seeing earlier. To do, late, done. This is a repeating group. And then inside this repeating group, in each column, I have another repeating group that is going to display the list of tasks depending on the colon we're in, so depending on the status of the task. How do I get my task? I simply make a do a search for tasks and then I apply constraint status equal parents group task status, the parents group task status being the current colon. So if I'm in the colon to do, the search will be filtered based on status equal to do. If we take a look at my database, you'll see that it's pretty simple. I have a data type task and a data type user. Uh, it's the default one. In my task, I have category, which is an option set category. We'll come back to it later. Uh, an option set priority and an option set statue. And then in terms of field, I have a title and a description. And then I have my option sets, which are my categories, my priorities, and my status. Priorities and categories, we won't be using them. It's simply for uh, for design and for coherence. But we're going to be using the status uh, because this is the columns uh, that we are going to build our Kanban on. Obviously, there is a ton of ways to build the Kanban and it will depend on what your app is doing and what you want to build. In this case, I've used the repeating group to build the columns uh, because in the ID um, is that people can build their own Kanban. Uh, my users can build their own Kanban, so I have to use a data type to make it dynamic. This way, if people want to add columns, uh, remove them or change the names, uh, they can do that. But if your app has only three or four columns or more that are static, you can totally build it in a static way. You will put three columns into a group and then you put a repeating group that will display the, the, the list of tasks or whatever you're displaying. So it will work the same way, just that in this case, I'm going to make something a bit more dynamic. Right, now that we know how this Kanban is working, the first thing we are going to do to add a drag and drop functionality to our app is to go into the plugins and install draggable elements. This is the official plugin uh, for draggable elements from Bubble, from the Bubble team, as you can see. So to find it, simply click on add plugins, you can type drag, and it's the first one that comes can see that it is made by Bubble and it is totally free. After installing this plugin to your app, you will find two new elements, the drag and drop group and the drop area. Obviously, these two elements are really important to make our functionality work. The drag and drop group is the group that you are going to be able to move, it's illustrated here, and the drop area is where you will drop the group and this is the, the area that will detect when a draggable group is dropped on it. When it detects something, we can then trigger our workflow and make various actions based on uh, what we did, the elements, etc. So, as we can see, we can drop it. The drop area changes color. This is the default style. You can do anything you want. This is just to, just an example. And when I drop it, then it uh, uh, it hides uh, because this is the default behavior of a draggable element. But we are going to change it uh, a bit later. Now that we have the basics of the plugin, we simply need to adapt it to our design. 
In this example, the draggable element, so the drag drop group, uh, will obviously be the card, uh, the task card. This is what we are going to be moving. And then the drop zone will be each column. So each column will be a different drop zone. Drop zone one, drop zone two, drop zone three. And then you can repeat it uh, based on as many columns that you have. Uh, the cool thing here is that with my design, since it is a repeating group, I only need to add one drop zone um, in my Kanban, and then it will repeat itself along with the repeating groups. If you have static columns, um, well, you can simply add many drop zones, uh, as much as you have a column, and then it will work the same way. Okay, so first we are going to be adding our drop zone. So this is where we are going to drag elements, and this is what will trigger our flows. So I'm going to get in my repeating group. As we can see, I have my repeating group columns here that have a, a bunch of groups, etc. But I'm going to place my drop zone just above uh, the repeating group that is containing all my tasks. So because I want to take only this part of the column, only the one that is displaying my task. So I'm going to take a drop area. I'm going to drop it just above my repeating group. I'm going to style it a bit, so I'm going to remove the flat color, uh, the border, and the border on this as well. And I'm going to drop my repeating group into it. This way, all my repeating group, all my column will be inside the drop area. And when I'm going to drop an element, it will be dropped in the column. So I simply have to uncheck this box. Um, and there we go. So that's it for the drop area. We don't really have... Uh, ah, yes, just a few things that you need to know. Um, obviously, you need to fill in the type of content um, in order to make the data communicate all the way from the repeating group to the other repeating group or the group, depending on how your app is built. In my case, this is a task status. So I'm going to take the parent group task status. So this is done. And also, you have a tolerance parameters, which can be intersect or fit. Fit in order to, for an element to be dropped on a zone. Uh, the element will be will need to be perfectly within the border of the drop zone, whereas as intersect, um, if the, drag the draggable elements simply cross the borders of uh, the drop zone, then it will be good and you can drop and then it will be detected by the drop area. So you have to find um, the right fit for your use type, but you have these two options. Okay, so now that I have my drop zone, obviously I simply need now my draggable groups. Uh, so I'm going to go into my repeating group and I'm going to see the group task card, which is the actual card of my task. And then I'm going to add a drag drop group just above it. I'm going to take my card and I'm going to um, send it in. So it will work with any content because the drag and drop group and the drop zone um, behave like groups. So they can contain as many elements and they also have container layout so they can be responsive. Um, same as before, I'm going to select the right type of content. Right now, I am in my repeating group task, so I'm displaying tasks. So I'm going to select the right data type and I'm going to take the current sales task. Also, one thing you need to do is to check the box, make this element droppable. Uh, this is what will actually be, uh, actually enable uh, the draggable behavior. And then behavior post drop, you can choose to hide group or move, my, move back. In this case, uh, we are going to select move back. So now, if we preview our app, we can see that we can already move our groups, but obviously nothing's happening because we didn't work yet on our workflows. So we are going to do just that, but we are on the right tracks. Okay, so now that we took care of the drop zone and the draggable elements, we only need to build our workflows. To do that, we are going to add a workflow action that has been added along with the plugin. We are going to select element. So we click here to add a new workflow, element, a drop area as a group dropped on it. So you can add it. And one thing very important that you should not forget is to select the type of thing on this workflow, otherwise it won't work. So in this case, the thing that I am moving and the thing on which I want to make a change is a task. So this obviously will depend on your app. In my case, it's a task. If it's a user, you select user. If it's a project, you select project, etc. etc. So data type task, and then I can simply make change to thing. What things am I going to change? I'm going to change the current workflows task. If you don't see this option, or if it is not the right option, make sure that you have selected the right type of things, because this comes from that. 
So I'm going to make change to current workflows task. The current workflows task in this case is the task that I am moving, is the task that I just dropped. And I'm going to change the status and I'm going to take this drop area task status. I'm able to take the task status from my drop area because the drop area is in my repeating group. So it's the current columns. And basically that's it. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to hit preview and we're going to see the result. I'm just going to get rid of the debugger. And there we are. So we can see that I have the task performance monitoring setup. I can drop it. Then we see that it has been updated. And then I find it here. And then I can do the same here, here, etc. etc. So basically, we just built a drag and drop system in bubble.io for free, for nothing, and it's working perfectly. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and to subscribe if you want other tutorials. And see you!